Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to show you guys how to properly read through a cash flow statement as well as some things to look out for when we are looking through them. But first, let me explain what a cash flow statement actually is. So a cash flow statement is one of the three key financial statements that you should look at when you're looking at investing into a company. The other two key financial statements are the balance sheet and the income statement, which I've already done videos on on my channel as well. So I'll leave links in the description to those videos if you guys haven't seen them yet. But the purpose of the cash flow statement is meant to show you the inflow and outflow of cash in the business. So quite literally, every number on the cash flow statement is meant to show you money coming in or out of the company. This makes understanding how to analyze a cash flow statement absolutely critical when you're looking at investing into a new business, because the cash flow statement shows you the financial health of the business as well as the liquidity and how able that business is to pay off all of their debts. So now let's hop into some real world cash flow statements so that we can all understand how to read them better as well as identify some things that we might want to look out for. Okay, so let's start this video off on Yahoo Finance once again. And all we need to do is go up to the search box up here at the top and search for the company that we want to take a look into. So today let's look into Delta once again. So it will bring you to this page and then all you need to do is hit financials and go to cash flow. And now you are looking at Delta's cash flow statement. So before we get started, there's a couple of things that I want to point out. And the first thing is that the top number on the cash flow statement is the net income. And where this net income number comes from is actually from the income statement. If you go to the income statement and scroll down to the net income, this is the number that appears on the top of the cash flow statement. The second thing that I want to say is that the cash flow statement is broken into four different segments. The first segment is the cash flow from operating activities. So this is the amount of cash flow that the business generates from day to day operations. The second segment here is cash flow from investing activities. And this is the amount of cash flow that is generated from investments back into the business or investments that the business holds. And then the third segment is cash flow from financing activities. And this is the amount of cash flow that the business generates from taking on new debt or raising new debt, as well as paying dividends and repurchasing the company's own stock. But we will get into that in a minute. And then the fourth and final segment is the net change in cash and just showing you the amount of cash that the business has as well as the company's free cash flow, which we will also be getting into in a minute. But those are the four main segments of the cash flow statement, and they all are a little bit different, but they are all very important. Another couple really quick but key things that I want to point out is that all of the numbers in this cash flow statement are reported in thousands. So we may see the net income here, and it looks like it's $4.7 million, but this is actually 4.7 million thousand, which is 4.7 billion. And also this TTM stands for trailing 12 months. So right now, Delta's trailing 12 months net income is the same as their 2019 reported net income because their fourth quarter 2019 reportings was their most recent reportings. So these two numbers are going to be the same. Now let's start digging into what these numbers actually mean. So as I already stated, net income comes from the net income reported on the income statement. So next is depreciation and amortization. And the reason that you add depreciation and amortization back onto the cash flow statement is because depreciation is not a a cash expense for the company. And we just have to think about this. So say you bought a car for $20,000 and in that year your car depreciated by $4,000. This depreciation is not a cash expense to you, it's just a loss in physical asset value. So since depreciation is not a cash expense for Delta, they add back in the depreciation to the cash flow statement. So in Delta's case we can see that they added in just under $2.6 billion of depreciation back onto the cash flow statement. And this story is the same with deferred income tax. Taxes. Deferred income taxes are not a cash expense, so they are added back onto the cash flow statement. So next down we have change in working capital. And we can see that Delta reported $219 million in change in working capital. So for those of you who might not know what working capital is, working capital is simply just the company's current assets minus the company's current liabilities. So some changes in working capital are reported on the cash flow statement. So when we see a positive change in working capital, it means that Delta either took on new debt or sold a fixed asset to generate more money and the amount of debt or money generated is $219 million in Delta's case. 
Okay, the next line down is accounts receivable. So to understand accounts receivable on a cash flow statement, we first need to understand what accounts receivable are. So right here I have the definition. Accounts receivable quite literally means money owed to a company by its debtors. So let's go back to Delta. So accounts receivable is money that is owed to Delta. And what I want to point out here before we move on is that Delta's accounts receivable on Yahoo Finance says that there has been no change, but this is actually false. If we go to Delta's 10K and look at their actual cash flow statement, we can see that they had negative 775 million in receivables. So sometimes you will see discrepancies between Yahoo Finance and the company's actual actual reported financial statements, but the bottom line here when it says net cash provided by operating activities is always going to be accurate. But now getting back to accounts receivable. So we can see that Delta had negative $775 million reported on their cash flow statement for accounts receivable. So when you see a negative accounts receivables number like this on a cash flow statement, it just means that the accounts receivable for the company actually increased. Because we have to think about this, if the accounts receivable is the amount of money owed to a business and that amount owed to the business increases year over year, it means that there's less cash flowing into the business and more money being owed to the business. So since this money is being owed as debt, it is not yet cash. So that is why an increase in accounts receivable is reported as a decrease in cash flow because this is not money coming in. So what I can do is I can give you guys the inverse because that might help us all understand this a little bit more. So for example, in 2018, we can see that Delta reported a positive accounts receivable number. So what this means is that Delta's accounts receivable from the previous year actually went down by this $108 million. So since Delta's accounts receivable was being paid off faster than it was growing, the difference is reported as cash because the accounts receivable being paid off is cash coming into the business. So what I'm trying to say here is that when you see a positive accounts receivable on the cash flow statement, it means that the accounts receivable are actually being paid off faster than they are growing. And when you see a negative number on the accounts receivable, it means that the accounts receivable is growing faster than they are being paid off. But now let's move on to inventory. And we can see that Delta spent $139 million on inventory. So in Delta's case, what this is, is they spent $139 million on jet fuel to add to their current inventory. So since Delta spent spent this $139 million, it is reported as a negative number on the cash flow statement because money is flowing out of the business. And the next line here is other working capital. And honestly, this is kind of the same as change in working capital that we already discussed earlier on. It's just a bunch of different numbers that Yahoo Finance just wants to report altogether. So that's why you're seeing this word other working capital because Yahoo Finance just doesn't have enough boxes to report each one individually, but they all are working capital related items. So we can see here in Delta's case, they reported just under $3.5 billion in additions to their working capital. And again, if you guys wanna go and take a look at Delta's actual 10K filing, you can go and see each individual thing here. And this is the same thing here with other non-cash items where you can see a negative $615 million expense. Yahoo Finance will not go into the specifics of this number. But regardless, as I said earlier on in the video, the net cash provided by operating activities will always be accurate. So even though Yahoo Finance kind of does a bad job reporting the rest of these numbers, this number right here will always be accurate. And this really is the most important number that we need to pay attention to. So we can see that Delta reported net cash provided by operating activities of $8.4 billion. So what this means is that Delta's operations produced positive cash flow of $8.4 billion, which is good. You want your net cash provided by operating activities to be a positive number because if your operations are producing a negative cash flow, it quite literally means that the company is losing money on their operations or the actual operations of the company is not producing a profit. So now let's scroll down to the second segment, which is cash flow from investing activities. And the first line here is investments in property, plant, and equipment. So in Delta's case, this might be something like buying a new airplane or buying a new office. And we can see that Delta spent $4.9 billion on property, plant, and equipment. The next line down is the acquisitions. So this is the amount of money that the company spends on acquiring another business. And we can see that in Delta's case, they spent $170 million in acquisitions. Now, if Delta's acquisitions were something crazy like $20 billion, that is when a red flag would start to pop up for me. And I would have to go and do more digging into these acquisitions that the company is actually making. Because if Delta is investing $20 billion into another company and not back into their own business, then maybe it tells me that I should be looking at investing my own money into another company as well. That's the way Benjamin Graham, who is the author of The Intelligent Investor, looks at it. And 
improved, it kind of makes sense to me as well. So that's kind of the way I look at it too. So just keep an eye on how much companies are investing into acquiring other companies versus how much they are actually investing back into their own business. And the next line down here is purchases of investments. And it looks like Delta made no new purchases of investments this year. So there's nothing really to report there. And right under that, we have sales of maturities and investment. And we can see that Delta generated $206 million in sales and maturities of investments. So let's just go over to Delta's 2018 cash flow statement. And we can see that they purchased $145 million in investments. So if Delta purchased $145 million of investments in 2018, then we can see that the sales and maturities of these investments yielded them $206 million. Now, please keep in mind that this is just an example because we can see that Delta has been investing a lot of money in the previous years. So this $206 million in sales and maturities of investments is most likely not solely due to this $145 million that they invested the previous year. I'm just showing you guys an example of what this actually means. And this $206 million could have come from any one of these previous investments that Delta has made. But regardless, this means that Delta did generate this positive cash flow from selling off their previous investments. And then other investing activities is kind of the same thing as sales and maturities of investments. It's just Yahoo Finance will not report the specifics of this. So again, if you want the specifics, go to Delta's 10K filing and all of the details will be in there if you want to break that down. And then at the bottom here, we have net cash used for investing activities. And we can see that in total, Delta spent $4.5 billion on investment activities in 2019. So since the majority of that expenditure was investments back into property, plant, and equipment, I am not concerned at all with this figure because Delta is spending the majority of this money on just investing back into the company, which is what you want to see. So now let's move down to cash flows from financing activities. So the top line here is debt repayment, and this one is pretty self-explanatory. This is just the amount of money that the company has paid back in debt in the last year. So in Delta's case, we can see that they paid back $3.3 billion in debt. And the next line down is common stock repurchased, which is kind of a controversial subject as of late. I'm not going to get into that in this video i just want to explain what these numbers mean though so common stock repurchasing is when the company literally buys back its own shares so delta spent just over two billion dollars repurchasing delta stock in the last year common stock repurchases are not a bad thing if the company can afford to do it and the company is buying back shares on the cheap if the company's cash flow does not support common stock repurchasing that is when it is a red flag for me because it means that the company is not spending their money wisely but if the company generates a ton of cash flow and they're repurchasing their stock, then I don't really see a problem with that. The next line down is dividends paid. And this is the dollar amount of dividends that the company has paid to its shareholders. So in Delta's case, we can see that they spent $980 million on paying dividends to all of the shareholders of the company. And then other financing activities is the amount of money the company raised through getting new debt. So we can see here that Delta raised about $1.7 billion in new debt. And then at the bottom here, we have the net cash used or provided by financing activities. And in Delta's case, we can see that they have negative two point eight billion dollars in financing activities and then the final segment here starts with net change in cash so we can see that Delta added $982 million to their cash pile this year. And let me show you guys how this number is derived. So if we go up, all we need to do is take the net cash provided by operations, so 8425, and then we add or subtract the net cash used for investing activities. So since this number is negative, we just have to subtract it. So we have to minus 4563 billion. And then we scroll down and we do this once more with the net cash used or provided by financing activities. And this is another negative number. Number, so we just have to minus again about 2.88 billion dollars and this leaves us with 982 million which is the net change in cash so since the net cash provided by operating activities is higher than the sum of the net cash used for investing activities and the net cash used for financing activities you are left with a net positive change in the cash position of the company which is actually good to see because it's good to be investing in companies that are increasing their cash position so over here in 2017, we can see that Delta actually had a negative change in their cash position. So I don't just write this off and say, oh, this is a negative thing. You want to go and investigate and see why there is a negative net change in cash for the year, because maybe it is justified. And my immediate thinking is maybe the company spent more money this year acquiring another business, which resulted in a net change of cash for the year. So if we scroll back up to the acquisitions, we can see that Delta did spend $1.2 billion on an acquisition in that year 
year. So what I would do from here is go and take a look into Delta's 10K filing and see what this acquisition was and make my own decision if I think it was warranted or not. But it most likely was warranted, so I would not be concerned of this negative net change in cash in 2017 because acquiring a business is one way to continue growing the business you are investing into. So as long as the company is left with enough cash to continue operating and everything is all good, then I would not consider this a red flag or a negative thing. So just always do a little bit more digging behind the numbers. And then the next line down is cash at the beginning of the period. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's just the amount of cash they had at the beginning of the year. And then the cash at the end of the period is the cash that they have at the end of the year. So pretty two self-explanatory things. And then at the very bottom here, we have free cash flow. And how free cash flow is determined is by taking your operating cash flow and minusing your capital expenditures. So obviously, your operating cash flow is the amount of money that the business actually generates from operations, which is also this number right here net cash provided by operations. Now, if we scroll back down this capital expenditure, some people refer to this as CapEx. So if you see CapEx, it is just capital expenditure. And what capital expenditure is, is simply just the investments back into property, plant, and equipment which is here $4.9 billion. And if you scroll down, you can see it $4.9 billion. So when you take the operating cash flow and you minus that capital expenditure, you are left with the company's free cash flow. And the company's free cash flow is essentially the amount of money that the company has to freely spend on whatever the management wants. So in Delta's case, we can see that they used the free cash flow to repurchase company stock and to pretty much pay dividends. So if a company is generating a negative cash flow and you see them repurchasing stock and paying dividends, that would be a red flag for me because why are you repurchasing stock or paying dividends if the company does not actually have a positive free cash flow? So one thing you also want to see is the company's free cash flow increasing year over year because that means that the company is continually generating more and more free cash to invest back into the business and whatnot. So we can see that Delta's free cash flow all the way over here in 2016 was $3.8 billion. And then it went down to 1.2 billion. So that is kind of a red flag, but ever since then the free cash flow has been increasing once again. So I don't like to see the cash flow take such a massive drop here from 2016 to 2017, but the fact that it is increasing again is good. Okay, so now I wanna show you guys what I personally look for and some things that I think are red flags. So right off the bat, the first thing that you want to see is the net income increasing year over year. So based on everything we've already seen, it looks like Delta had a pretty good year in 2016. And then the next year, it looks like it was rougher and then it's been steadily increasing. And now Delta is increasing their net income once again. So this is a good thing to see. And if I were looking to invest into Delta, I would just take a look at the 2017 10K filing to try and figure out why their net income did drop in this year. If we scroll down, you also want the net cash provided by operating activities to be increasing as well, because this is the amount of money that the operations of the business actually generates. And this is actually a good thing to see because in 2016, we can see that they generated 7.2 billion, 2017 was 5.1 billion, 2018 was 7 billion, and then 2019 was the best year yet with 8.4 billion. So this is also a very good thing to see. In the cash flow from investing activities, as I already said, I would just pay attention to the acquisitions versus the amount of money the company Companies investing back into their own business. And if the acquisitions is higher than the amount of money they're investing back into their own business, that's when I would start asking questions and digging a little bit more deep. And then in the financing area, I would just be paying attention to how much new debt the company is taking on. If this number is ridiculous and you think the company cannot pay off this debt in the future, or it is going to seriously harm the future cash flow of the company, that is when my red flags would start popping off and I would be like, why is this company raising so much new debt and what is the purpose of it? So I actually just want to show you guys a cash flow statement that I think is pretty bad. And this is from Uber. Now I'm not going to say if Uber is a good investment or a bad investment. I just want to show you guys what a bad cash flow statement actually looks like. So right off the bat, we can see that in 2016, Uber's net income was negative $370 million. 2017 was negative 4 billion. 2018 was positive almost a billion. And then in 2019, it skyrocketed all the way to negative $8.5 billion. So Uber's net income is a trend that continues decreasing and getting worse and worse. Another thing here on Uber's cash flow statement that they have is stock-based compensation. So let's just go to Investopedia and read what stock-based compensation is. Investopedia says stock compensation compensation is a way corporations use stock options to reward employees. So this is the dollar amount of stock options that have been awarded to employees such as the management, CEO, and basically everyone. 
And in Uber's case, this is almost $4.6 billion. And this is a major, major red flag for me. It's not a red flag by itself for companies to reward management or employees with stock options. But when you're awarding almost $4.6 billion and the company's net income is negative $8.5 billion, that is very, very sketchy because the company is not actually generating a profit. So as a shareholder, you are a part owner of this business. So if I owned Uber stock, I would be thinking, why am I paying the employees, the CEO, the management, all of these bonuses when the company is not yet producing an actual profit? It just means that this stock-based compensation is quite literally coming from the pockets of the investors and not the actual operations of the business. So as an investor, I'm not really comfortable with that. But anyways, let's go down to the net cash provided by operating activities. And we can see that this number is negative, which means that Uber is losing $4.3 billion on their operations every year right now. And I'm going to take this a step further because if Uber is not generating a positive cash flow from the operations of the business, then you need to go and look at where the money for this company is actually coming from. Like how is this company remaining in business if they're losing $4.3 billion every year on their operations? So this is when you have to scroll down to the cash flow provided from financing activities because financing activities is the company's way of raising money. So we can see here in Uber's case, they have common stock issued and they generated $8.4 billion from issuing common stock. Now this common stock issuance is because Uber did an IPO or an initial public offering, which means that Uber went public and common investors such as myself can go and buy Uber stock. So Uber generated just under $8.5 billion from issuing shares to the public to invest into. They essentially sold $8.5 billion worth of shares to the public, which we can now buy and sell on the stock market. But when you see the net cash provided by financing activities is such a positive number versus the net cash provided by operating activities being such a negative number, this is what Benjamin Graham calls an OPM company. And OPM stands for other people's money. This means that Uber right now is literally running off other people's money. So Uber is classified as an OPM company. So as an investor, this is a red flag because it means that the company's operations are not yet sustaining the business. So until Uber's operations can provide positive cash flow, they are going to be relying on outside funding and outside investors to continue growing the business. So Uber's cash flow statement is just a very good example to show you guys of multiple red flags that do stand out to me when I'm looking through cash flow statements. All right, so I really hope that wasn't too much rambling. I just really wanted to dig in because in my opinion, I think the cash flow statement is the most important financial statement to pay attention to. So I really hope that I provided enough explanation and that the two examples that I showed made enough sense. Before I wrap up the video, I just wanna let you guys know that I am working on building a full investment course that will show you everything from the basics of investing to how to confidently evaluate and find your own businesses to invest into. I have received a ton of requests to build something like this, and I am aiming to have it done for some time around the end of May. So if you guys want to stick around and be here for when the course is available, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the future notifications regarding the course. And if you guys did enjoy this video or you found it helpful, then please remember to just leave a like on it. Leaving a like really helps out my channel and I really, really appreciate it. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope to see you again in the next video.